All right, so uh, let's get through the book chapter and just highlight some of the uh, key things and uh, some interesting points I think you should uh, make sure you uh, fully understand. I think this is an excellent chapter and I do hope that uh, you take the time to get through it. Um, <coughs> so let's get going. So again, I'm going to really just uh, hit on some of the um, key points here. So. I think this is a uh, good example here. What I want to show here is the plateau view, so-called plateau view, right? So you can see that um, if you take an x-ray with a standard AP view shown here, the tibia plateau, because of the slope, you don't really see kind of on end, right? And when you get a plateau view with x-ray beam is shot a little bit caudal, right, to account for the slope, uh, and this is something you can often do intraoperatively uh, to help, then you kind of see this end on. And remember from the last set of slides, the medial and lateral uh, plateaus are not necessarily, uh, they don't necessarily have the exact same slope, but nevertheless you can neutralize some of that by shooting the x-ray beam down this way, all right? All right, so let's just uh, move on here. I think this is a nice representation of how 3D recons can uh, really help with your assessment, sometimes for preoperative planning purposes. 3D recons, you know, here they've subtracted the femur, so you can kind of see the articular surface a little bit better. If you don't subtract the other bone, sometimes it can be hard to see that on a 3D recon, but certainly, um, you know, the 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 sort of surface anatomy of the bone is very, very nicely identified on 3D recons. So Schatzker classification is still very commonly used, so you should be absolutely intimately familiar with it, and it's just reviewed here in these uh, figures. AO classification I think is pretty straightforward. Once you learn it, it's applicable everywhere. The tibial plateau is a nice um, representation of what the A, B, and C types of periarticular fractures mean, right? So periarticular, extraarticular, unicondylar, and, uh, you know, bicondylar or, you know, partial articular and uh, complete articular, right? All the articular fragments are dissociated from the, from the shaft, right? Um, more classification not used as much. Um, some people do like to use it. Uh, it's kind of uh, demonstrated here, um, and these uh, are typically for fracture dislocations, right? Here's a nice example of uh, fracture dislocation. Um, you can see here uh, the avulsion of the uh, uh, fibular head. The lateral side has been disrupted here. Uh, that ends up being fixed uh, directly, and the uh, medial plateau is where most of the fixation ends up going uh, to support this. Okay. So here's a nice example uh, demonstrating the um, the sort of uh, capsular uh, extent of the uh, of the knee joint capsule, right? So 14 millimeters from the articular surface down to here. So typically speaking, you can um, stay out of the joint if your pins are placed uh, below, oh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, below this, below, below this level. So if you're doing like a ring external fixator, for instance, and you want to make sure your pins stay out of the joint, you have to make sure you keep the pins at least below this level or this level here. Okay, now if you're at the level of tib-fib joint, there potentially can be communication between the tib-fib joint and here, right? But circumferentially, otherwise your the capsule reflection comes down to about that level. So again, implications particularly for hybrid or thin wire pin placement. Um, here's a uh, example of uh, sort of exposure of the uh, uh, lateral uh, uh, proximal tibia through the sort of a straight incision, lateral parapetellar uh, approach, elevating the muscle uh, from Gertie's tubercle and going posteriorly. Um, here's an example of um, spanning external fixation and fasciotomy. This, you're going to recognize these tattoos that come up later in the chapter. Um, and here you can see medial lateral incisions for uh, four compartment fasciotomy of the leg and a spanning external fixator, which I'm sure you'll see some patients get treated like this. 3D reconstruction of the same injury. Um, 
through the same incisions or through the uh, sort of proximal extent of that uh, incision you can see the medial plateau being fixed and then through a third incision here uh, the plateau being fixed laterally right so uh, fasciotomies for the anterior and lateral compartments fasciotomy for the posterior compartments and then medial fixation here interlateral fixation here okay and there, there's the fixation and it uh, looks like the uh, one fasciotomy wound could not be closed probably on the lateral side and that was treated with a split thickness skin graft okay um, most of the time you know lateral sided depressions uh, split depressions like like this can be treated with um, uh, elevation bone grafting in a locked and I'm sorry a non-locked plate right so you can hear a standard cortical screw fixation subchondral support maybe some bone grafting here of the defect uh, this was the case was treated with Kinsella's graft and a non-locked buttress plate right here you can see um, large depression uh, perhaps a small split this is a very typical case that you may see um, because the uh, patient has um, you know severe osteopenia rather than you know the fracture also comes all the way out here so rather than just filling this with bone graft this is supported with a uh, buttress plate as well and a large amount of um, of uh, cancellous bone I believe it was cancellous bone actually it was but they recognize you could have used calcium phosphate cements um, uh, fracture dislocation injury shown here uh, and this is um, and again, uh, Dr. Reed does a nice job kind of going through each of the fracture types and how you should think about them when you're uh, considering treatment. Um, here you have a uh, uh, bicondylar, uh, um, or actually really a, a very comp a complex medial plateau fracture that extends into the lateral plateau, but the lateral condyle itself is actually not fractured off uh, from what it appears. Um, so uh, this is treated with elevation, uh, buttress fixation on the medial side, um, and you can see uh, in this particular case two plates, right? One straight medial and then one more posterior medial uh, to deal with uh, the comminuted uh, medial plateau fracture. Okay, here you can see a case involving uh, a little bit more of almost a fracture dislocation. Uh, this is probably you know after closed reduction but you can still see some subluxation coming here this needs direct fixation on the medial side shown here and then because of the you know, lateral ligament injury this looks like this was um, uh, fixed with uh, repair of the avulsion uh, anatomically back down we talked about a lot of the uh, posterior medial fractures in the uh, in the uh, PowerPoint uh, lectures and these these come up quite a bit so here's a fibular head here Here's the uh, tibial plateau. So this is a posterior medial fracture, right? This is this corner here is the posterior medial uh, part of the tibia. So uh, that's also shown here, okay, um, and shown here, okay. So make sure you don't miss that. Understand that uh, uh, that is often, especially a fracture like this, is not going to be captured well by placing a plate just on the medial side, nor is it going to be captured well by just putting a plate anterolaterally. Um, this most likely needs some direct buttress fixation down on the posterior medial side. Okay, here's a case showing a surgical approach uh, to the uh, uh, posterior medial tibial plateau, so slightly curvilinear incision uh, going between the uh, the uh, pes tendons and the uh, uh, medial head of the gastroc, and uh, that gives you access back there. And here it just shows simple. Know, buttress plating using your slightly under contoured plate. This is your key screw right here, right? And that screw there is going to sort of uh, get this plate down, get the let the plate do the reduction for you. Um, you often will not see the reduction at the joint surface very easily um, unless you make a split in the MCL itself. And here's a case showing that with the buttress plate going in first, and this plate also to correct to to, to control the, the varus. Uh, collapse there's a buttress plate medially as well okay so uh, here's uh, that uh, fix that uh, fixation kind of shown to completion here all right so um, a couple of other tips now 
I mentioned that uh, the, the distractor is a great tool. Uh, it's not one that I tend to use a lot around the knee so much, but um, uh, I find it more useful around the ankle personally, but uh, certainly uh, ligament ataxis can get your reduction, so a distractor can uh, help get that for you. Um, uh, so here's an example of a uh, distractor being used intraoperatively to assist with the uh, uh, reduction and uh, it's a pretty powerful tool. Here's a case we saw a little bit of this uh, before, bicondylar uh, tibial plateau fracture uh, being treated with uh, bilateral plating. Looks like bilateral non-locked plates in this particular case, right? So if you're going to treat a bicondylar fracture with uh, 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 with uh, non-locked plates, you absolutely need to have plates on both sides of the proximal tibia. Okay, this was treated with a sort of a straight anterolateral incision and then making a flap over to the lateral corner as opposed to some of the curvilinear incisions I, li I, I like to do, um, and then a posterior medial incision separately. And again, avoiding intervening stripping. We talked about this in the slides too, so avoiding stripping in between the two uh, flaps to preserve the uh, uh, soft tissues over the, that part of the tibia. Okay, another uh, case complex proximal tibia fracture, a lot of metadiaphyseal dis uh, dissociation, small depression, nothing terrible, right? So um, this was fixed actually with a 4-5 locked plate. You can see 5-0 locking screws here and here. Um, not a lot of articular uh, issues to deal with. Um, and in this particular case, um, you know, this was with, with a single lateral locked plate uh, was able to uh, go on to uh, uh, heal, right? And uh, here's another example of uh, of that. Uh, this t this time, how a, a lot of depression on this side, minimal injury on the medial side. So you can see a fracture line coming down here, non-displaced fracture line here. Um, you could argue, perhaps, if you're not sure, this should be fixed with a uh, medial plate as well. But it's not a posterior medial displaced fracture. It's kind of non-displaced, so. Uh, big lock plate on this side, lots of rafting screws supporting their you know, depressed area right here. And um, again, if you're going to use a single plate for that, it's got to be a locked plate. Okay, so here you can have, uh, uh, you know, you can see a pretty extensively comminuted injury, um, massive widening of the uh, tibial plateau, um, reduction, bone, you know, bone grafting. Uh, and then neutralized with a uh, circular fixator. Okay, so we talked about this in the slides too. It's a perfectly good option. Uh, definitely keeps you out of trouble from having to have large plates in there if you're worried about deep infection. And if, once this goes on the heel, you take the you take the the the, the frame off, and now you're not worried about uh, having um, you know a retained hardware, just maybe a few screws. Okay, another example. Another example of that, um, particularly nasty fracture seen here, open injury, right? No ligament ataxis here, so once you pull it out to length, you might get a better idea. In this particular case, you can see use of antibiotic beads, extensive you know, reconstruction. You could also argue perhaps articular reconstruction and then neutralization with a ring fixator might be helpful for this. Um, you know, type 3B open fracture, but uh, you can see a nice job done getting that. And remember, we're worried about alignment, we're worried about stability, um, and um, you know, uh, another another example here with uh, um, extensive injury, and you can see unfortunately in this case this goes on to extensive heterotopic bone formation, ankylosis, and you know, kind of a stuck knee at that point. All right, so the, uh, the, the ending part of this chapter, the uh, last part really goes through some complications, right? So here you can see a case that goes on to uh, you know, collapse, arthrosis, ends up with a total joint replacement, right? Post-traumatic arthritis. Uh, here you can see a case um, of, um, you know, loss of reduction, non-union, breakage of the plate. So these are complex cases. Infection treated with beads, you know, a revision fixation, and again, ring fixator is often a nice salvage tool for cases like this. Okay, and uh, another case here of uh, you know sort of inadequate repair uh, fixation initially, revised, gone on to you know more of a stable 
stable alignment. So, um, you know, it's one thing to do percutaneous fixation, but you know, if this is not if this is not reduced properly, right? It's in tremendous valgus and it's not neutralized properly. Um, it's going to do poorly, right? Um, saw this case earlier in the book chapter. Kind of comes back again here. Uh, here you can see this is uh, treated with uh, um, fixation of the joint surface. So remember, when you do a ring fixator, it doesn't mean that you don't have to reduce and fix the joint surface. It just means you don't stabilize that to the shaft with a plate. You can just use um, a fixator. So you see that was used here. Um, and uh, you know, in this particular case, it was a patient. It was an open injury. The patient had to get a flap. Unfortunately, it drifts into a little bit of uh, varus, and uh, you know, this goes on to needing a correction with a plate and screws to get that fixed. So, um, again, I think uh, alignment is really critical to prevent instability and uh, non-union. Um, I think there's a lot of pearls in this chapter, so uh, I kind of just, you know, when I do these uh, presentations, I just kind of scan through and go through the uh, pictures, but um, uh, I can assure you this is a nicely written chapter. Go through the text, go through the cases, the, t the tips and pearls, and I think you'll learn a lot from this one. All right, thanks.